What's going on, everybody? This is John Stark. Just want to let you know I'm chopping it up with Buck. So, man, it is great to have the one and only John Starks, the guy that could talk trash but could play with the best of them. Uh, and John and I have been trying to get together. He know, We know a good mutual friend, Mike Gardner, who has kind of put us together. And Mike and I got to know each other in Indy, and he's gotten to know John. And, and John, it's great to have you on, man. How you doing? It's good to be here. Uh, I'm doing great. It's, yeah. Just uh, enjoying uh, – off season now, unfortunately, but uh, it was a good run. Well, well, let me ask you about that because I know you're still involved with the Knicks in some way, shape, or form. What what has been what has that been like to actually watch this young team kind of get back to where you guys were in your heyday back in the those battles that y'all used to have in, in the NBA uh, playoffs? It's been fun, man, uh, just to watch the growth of the team this year. Uh, and obviously Jalen Brunson has been a huge blessing for this organization and for this team. Uh, the young man came in here and just put on a show all year long. He got kind of, to me, he got robbed not making the all-star team this year, but uh, he just, didn't, you know, whenever you have a leader such as him, and he grew up around the game, obviously because of his father, Rick, um, and, you know, he just got that old soul, the way he play, the way he leads. Uh, obviously, he was a two-time national champion in college at Villanova. And he just bringing that experience and that, that heart that he plays with uh, to the Knicks. And so it, it's been great. You go right to that, but I'm going to take you all the way back. Talk about growing up in Tulsa. I'm a Texas kid, so I know been around the – the guys from Oklahoma. Tell us a little bit about your journey and what got you to the NBA, but just through Tulsa Central High School, all those things that you had to go through because you it, it wasn't easy for you. I mean, it, you had a journey, my man. Yeah, I did have a journey. Uh, it was a tough road, uh, you know, but, you know, I got a lot out of it. Uh, you know, I learned a lot along the way, uh, just the struggles that myself and my family uh, went through just trying to make ends meet. And, uh, you know, I was very fortunate that I was blessed with some talent and gave me the opportunity to uh, live out my dream of playing basketball ever since I was seven years old. Um, you know, I wasn't recruited coming out of uh, high school, uh, so I had to go to junior college route. And um, my first couple of years wasn't too great of years because of my immaturity. And I was able to, you know, get myself together uh, once I got left the second college, well, I got kicked out of second college. Um, I was able to uh, get myself and grow a little bit. I ended up getting married uh, during that time and uh, got a new focus. You know, I had my son uh, back in uh, 86, 87. And, um, you know, it gave me a whole perspective on life, you know, and so I had to grow up pretty uh, you know, it's something when you don't have any responsibility and you just go out there and, and you just, you know, trying to live life, but you're not really doing the things that you're supposed to be doing in life uh, mm -hmm. to be successful. And uh, I finally had to gather myself and and I was able to do that and became a junior college All-American once I enrolled back in school, got um uh, offer from Oklahoma State, a uh, coach by the name of Leonard Hamilton, who's the Florida okay. State coach now. Great, my great, coach. great, great coach, great guy. Too. Yes, he is. And uh, Bill Self was my assistant coach, actually. He's the one that really was out there recruiting me when I was in junior college. And I ended up having a, a successful uh, uh, year at Oklahoma State and ended up not getting drafted, but ended up getting the opportunity to play for the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, Coach Larry Brown, who was at Kansas at the time, and they won a national championship there that year with Danny Manning. Okay. Um, he ended up taking a job at San Antonio Spurs, and he liked what he saw in me, obviously, because yeah. we yeah. played against him so much. He gave me opportunity to come in and try out, and I made the most of it. You know what I mean? All those hard 
I wanted to take you back to college, whether it was Roger State or Northern Oklahoma College, or, you know, when you were going through that, who, besides your wife and your son, Tulsa Junior College, when, when you were going through those trials and tribulations, you know, who was most influential? What, what person or what made you, because we see this happening all the time where people have mm -hmm. hit, hit a certain point. And they don't need yes people around them. They need people to tell them, no, this is what you need to do. And and who was that person for you? Well, that was my older brother. Uh, okay. My brother, who's the second oldest, I should say, Vince Bonnie. We call him Bonnie. His name is Vincent. Um, but he, uh, you know, he was a football player. And so during that time off uh, from college, in between college, we used to get up every morning and just go play uh, basketball at the local gyms. and. You know, we'd be there most of the day playing. And, you know, we used to take me to go work out. And then we would play one-on-one. -on -one. And you can imagine me playing against a football player. That's uh, why those, you that's Those why battles you were so – oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, those battles was uh, – they was rough, and, you know. And it was, a, it was a mental block that I had because I was a better basketball player than him, but he was my older brother. So okay. I wouldn't go as hard against him. And he started roughing me up and told me that I had to get through him if I'm mm -hmm. going to be anything. And finally, I finally beat him for the first mm -hmm. time. And he couldn't beat me no more after that. <laughs> and uh, he just put that drive in me. And so I was very fortunate that he was there uh, in the early stages and part of my life and pushing me. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Well, I mean, you know, everybody remembers you for the dunk. That you actually had. This was a 25 year anniversary, right? Or, or, uh, 30 year. 30, 30 year anniversary. Yes. Where did the time go? I know, uh, right? <laughs> yeah. What's interesting about that, you actually tried to go up and dunk on Pat when you first got to, to New York. Huh? You, you just said, I'm, I'm going to dunk on you. You know <laughs> Yeah. Well, that was, that was uh, the last day of uh, training camp, veteran okay. training camp. And so I, I needed to make a statement that I wanted to be here. Uh, I had a great, great uh, preseason, uh, but I wasn't sure if they was going to keep me or not. And so uh, I treated that last day of uh, practice like it was a playoff game. And I came in there, and I, I mean, I was on fire the whole day. And yeah. I saw an opportunity to go dunk on Patrick to really, you know, make myself stand out and uh, just forgot he was seven foot and could jump at the time. So he ended up catching catching my dunk and I came down and twisted my knee uh, which I thought I had tore it up and he did too he felt bad uh, but it was a blessing in disguise because they put me on IR and I didn't know at the time when they put you on IR uh, they couldn't cut you and so yeah. it made their job a lot easier because I you know they always tell me we wasn't going to cut you but who knows you know what I mean? yeah. they say they say it yeah, but you know who knows. But it, it was a blessing in disguise. So I got a chance to stick around, and and finally uh, in December I was ready to come off. Actually, I was about ready to go in there and tell them either take me off IR or <laughs> just let me go. And yeah. uh, Trent Tucker ended up getting hurt uh, the game yeah. the day I was gonna go in there and tell them, and uh, gave me opportunity to come off IR. And my first game was against Michael and the Chicago Bulls, and, okay. and that was a thrill, you know, because he's a, the guy who I, I looked up to, you know, coming mm -hmm. up, and like so many young players. And um, so I was excited to play against him, and I had a real good game against him. So, and that's when I really knew that, okay, I'm ready. Now, now it's interesting. Going back to Michael, there's always talk about, you know, it's kind of like Bob Gibson in baseball. You're not supposed mm -hmm. to say, you're not supposed to do this. I'm sure you guys were all like, because y'all were tough. Anthony Mason, yeah. Chuck Oakley. I mean, y'all had a, a, a squad that even if you weren't a Knicks fan, being a football player, I loved how y'all played the game. I'm going to just yes. put it. But what was it about that tough to do to elevate your game? It just, you know, the way we played, you know what I mean? Coach Riley had us like some mad dogs out there on the court. So, <laughs> you know, no matter who we faced, you know, we were going to play that, that way regardless. We had a lot of respect for Michael, obviously, because of who he was and, and um, you know, what he has accomplished within this league. And But, you know, it wasn't, you know, him above us, you know what I mean? So we went and treated him like he was any other player. But we knew that 
he wasn't any other player. We had to lift our game to play against the Bulls. They had a they had a squad. You know, they had, you know, another Hall of Famer and Scotty Pippen on their team and Horace Grant and, you know, BJ Armstrong. Uh they they had a little crew there. And so yeah, yeah. but, you know, the one common denominator is that black cat. <laughs> he was <laughs> he was hard to deal with uh most of the time. But, you know, we battled him and uh we put up uh had some great games and you know those those series against it, Chicago was some of the most fun, exciting series that I ever played in. Okay. Well, you know the other the other part to that is, you know, when you think about it, one of your the, the big play we just talked about the dunk was against us, right? I mean, yeah. I, you know, you, you you did it on Horace Grant with the left hand, which still I'm impressed with lefty, and I know how hard that is because mm-hmm. you were. Right-handed shooter, right? Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. You went up left-handed, and I mean, it was a flush. Tell us about that. And I, I think people always ask about big plays when you make them. Was it fun? That moment when it happened. Yeah, it just you know, it just happened. Uh, you know, I saw something that they was doing uh, as far as playing me and Patrick pick and roll. When Patrick come over, set a pick. BJ would play the play. He would kind of look in my eyes and knew the pick was coming, and he would jump to my high side. And then normally, you know, whoever's guarding Patrick would be on the baseline, so they like to funnel me to the baseline and trap me. That particular play, when I was coming down, I was kind of slow dragging him down the court. And when I got in position, I saw Bill Cartwright was out of position. He was still high, and BJ had his back to him, so he didn't realize he wasn't in position. So. I cut my eyes early, and he did exactly what I thought he was going to do. He jumped to my high side. <laughs> Patrick, came, Patrick came over there and gave him a little shove, and okay. I just took off baseline, and all I saw was Horace Grant. I knew I had to go in strong. You know, yeah. Horace is about 6'10", by 2'7". And he was caught so strong, I, too. He wasn't no – Yeah, hip. yeah. No, he wasn't no look. No, yeah. no. No, and uh, – so I just jumped with everything I had inside of me. But I jumped better going that way, you know, with my left mm-hmm. uh, for whatever reason. Most, you know, right-handers like going right hand and coming off too. I like going, you know, right and coming off my uh, – coming coming with my left hand. And, uh, you know, it was just a spectacular play. Uh, it put us up by five. The game wasn't over yet. But um, the garden just, like, exploded. And uh, it was like the loudest I ever heard it. And, you know, ran back down court and, you know, went to the bench trying to look up, catch the play, couldn't catch the play. I didn't know until I saw the picture the next day, sitting down reading the newspaper and (laughs) saw who was on the back end of that play. And it was Michael because you never, never, never catch him in an unpredictable like that. And But that's just Michael being Michael. He was – I ain't, he knew he couldn't get to the play. He just went up and tried to block it. He probably wished he wouldn't have never jumped. I know that now. Because when <laughs> I see him, when I see him sometimes, he, he'll tell me I never dunked on him. But I tell him I got a big pain. Said yeah. I did. So he got he got part of it. Horse got the brunt of it, but he, yeah. he got some of it too. Well, the, you know, the other thing, there's a big rivalry that you guys have with the Bulls. But you and Reggie Miller you go after. I'm an yeah. Indian. Yeah, me and Michael had like a healthy competitiveness yeah. to our <laughs> our competition. Me and Reggie was more combative, um, yeah. you know, because that was just how Reggie was. And <laughs> as a uh, as a young player, he was trying his best to like get inside my head. Yeah, and yeah. you know because guys was doing that to him when he first came in the league, mm-hmm. and that's how the league was. You know, you got tested as mm-hmm. a as a young player to see where you was at as a young player, and so uh, for me, I had to gain my respect, and you know, I gained it that one game and game number three when I hit Buddy because <laughs> he was shooting he was shooting elbows at me, you know, the whole game, and I was telling the referee. And yep. he didn't want to do anything about it. So where I'm from, you know, you take care of your business. And I had to take care of that business. But I always say after that particular play, never had any more problems with Reggie for the rest of my career. You now, know? when y'all see each other now, 
we cordial, you know what I mean? We ain't going to start <laughs> slapping one another, you know what I mean? I, I yeah. speak to him, he speak to me. You know, oh, oh, sometimes, gonna, man, we, those rivals are hard to let go because I got some brothers that I'll see and I'll dab them up, but I'm not, we ain't lingering too long. Exactly how it is, and you know. He knows that, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, the crazy thing about it, Indiana was built just like us, you know yes. what I mean? Exactly. You look at Rick Smith, like Patrick Ewan, you look at the Davis mm -hmm. boy, Oak and Mace, you look at myself, Reggie, uh, yeah. the point guards, you know, you could easily drop that team in New York and drop us in Indiana. And you couldn't tell the difference that's other exactly. than the name on name on the back. So um, yeah. that's probably why we didn't like them. And that's probably why they didn't like us. So, yeah. <laughs> But we're, yeah. we're, we're going to take a short break. We're going to come back because I really want to hear about some of the things. It's awesome. We'll be right back on Chopping It Up with Buck. At Heslip Wealth Advisors, our goal is to help small businesses develop quality retirement plans for their employees through our Lunch and Learn seminars. We provide lunch and learning tools to help your company succeed and unmatched customer service. I want to ask you about one guy who I, I think a lot of credit, but I don't think he gets enough credit being as great as he was. Hakeem Olajuwon. I'm a Houston oh, guy. So yeah. I, grew, I grew up when he was with the Fly Slammer Jamma, but then also watching him in the league. Tell Because guys still go to him for a post game, John. He, he, he was just a great player, man. He was special uh, because of his size at 16. And um, he could move like a cat. And, you know, he was very agile. Uh he do everything out there on the court. You know, he developed an outside shot. Uh, I think Kobe even went to to him for post moves too. Um, yeah. But he was just he was just special, man. Uh, you know, there's only three players that Patrick ever heard him talk about that mm -hmm. he respected the most out of everybody. That was Akeem, David Robinson. Excuse me, Akeem, Tim Duncan, and um, who was the other dude? Um, and Shaq. Okay. You know what I mean? Those are like the three guys that he respected the most. And okay. um, never heard anything. He never had anything bad to say about neither one of them. You know what I mean? And Akeem was just, you know, I wish he was a little shorter because he wouldn't have got his hands <laughs> on that shot. I had me a championship. I got but, you. Uh, and that <laughs> agile. Um, yeah. But he, he was just special, man. You, you, couldn't, you couldn't get inside his head or anything like that. He just kept coming coming at you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and just, you know, he's just a special player. Who, who was the one guy that you always had that, I mean, you know, didn't get, maybe gave you problems and everybody else that we don't know about or just somebody that was off the radar, but you knew when you played him, you had to be ready that night? Well, well there's a couple of guys. Mitch Richmond is one of them. You know, I came in the league with yeah. Mitch at Golden, <laughs> at Golden State. You know, yeah. Uh, they called him the hammer. And, uh, you know, he he was a big guard. You know, he's six five by two twenty, two thirty, oh, and yeah. those guys always gave me trouble because of the, the size and their weight. And uh, as well as Clyde Drexler, mm. you know, Drexler was six seven, can jump out the gym, can shoot it, uh, can handle. You know, he had everything in his game. You know, those guys always gave me trouble because of their size. Yeah. Well, you know, John, you, you were known as a defensive guy and you became, I mean, your, your offensive game improved. What do you see with the NBA game now compared to when you were playing and some of the things that you, you've kind of watched? Like, a lot of people probably expected the Lakers and the Celtics to be in the championship, but mm -hmm. that, the Nuggets are definitely a team that played well and like maybe out of the East, it won't be Miami, but you know that Heat team. Yeah. Uh, better than anybody because of Pat Riley and, and Spolstra and that, you know, the legacy there. Mm -hmm. uh, now and just some of the things with the, the, the playoffs and championships that you, you watch. Well, it's a little different because it's, it's more of a, you know, wide open game. Unlike the only team really play play inside is Denver. You know, obviously with Djokovic, you know what I mean? Because he's such a dominant force down low. And, you know, most big guys, they want to do what we do, <laughs> go out, step outside and shoot the ball. But that's not what he wants to do. He want to be down there post, making things happen down there. And me personally, I think no one can stop them right now because of what he has around him, the type of players he has. You know, he has shooters. He had those gritty players like Bruce Brown, you know, guys like that. Um, they – dismantled 
LA, which I didn't think they could do, you know, yeah. with LeBron and Davis and, and LA had, you know, Austin, um, he came and, and Austin Reeves showed his butt out in these playoffs, earned him a lot of money. I can tell you that now. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but I didn't think they would beat them for all. I, I felt that Denver probably would beat them, but not like mm-hmm. what they did. They dismantled L.A. And uh, the game has changed, obviously, because yeah. it's more of an outside game, more mm-hmm. so than it is an inside game. Uh, back during our day, everybody had low post players. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not that way no more. Only a couple of teams like, you know, Philly and, and, and um, you know, Denver, obviously, uh, I thought my uh, Milwaukee did a horrible job of using their, yeah. their height, and yeah. you know, as far as being yeah. down in that post, yeah, uh, that's why you know the coaches don't. That's true. So true. They get you fired. You know what I mean? And uh, unfortunately, you know, things happen, and yeah. and so you have to just you know move on from it. And uh, but I think the game has. During the playoffs, they let you play a little bit more. Let me just say yeah. that. They let you play a lot more. They let you get a little bit more aggressive. It gets back to the old ways of playing. And uh, I like seeing that because it's exciting. You know, if we can get that way during the season, you will see more yeah. exciting close games and battles to the end. Like these teams, you know, when they feel that they defeated, they just like they quit. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. that's why yeah. you see these, see these blowouts. Like I was just talking to uh, – some of my former players, um, teammates, and we were saying, you think back in the 90s, you never saw a blowout during the playoffs. They, you know, a blowout during the playoffs is like at the end of the game where mm. the game is close and all of a sudden team may run off, you know, eight points and beat you by 10 or 12, <laughs> something like that, but never yeah. 20, 30-point blowouts. That, that never happened. Well, well, John, I want to ask you too, man. I don't know if you know John or know his people. And, you know, you had some struggles in junior college. But anytime I always tell people that people don't know what's going on in folks' inner circle. They don't. don't. Mm -hmm. But just from your observations, and maybe you have spoken to him, how is he going to turn this around and get him some? Because the kid's got a lot of talent. Mm -hmm. Not fear. Not be fully developed to the degree that we can. Yeah, he. I always say he reminds me of AI so much, but he's mm. AI 2.0. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, he can yeah. jump out the gym. Uh, one thing he's going to have to learn is stop flying in there because that's going to get you hurt. You know, like <laughs> he got him hurt during the playoffs. You know, yeah, he's yeah. like 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, I don't know how tall he is, but weighing mm. a buck, 50 bucks, 60 seems like you know, and that, that'll get you hurt. I, I got a lesson from uh, the late, great Derek Smith uh, when I first came in the league, and me and him had the same agent, and we used to work out uh, during the summer, and I used to fly in there and do the same thing he did. He, he told me, he said, you got to stop that. I'm just going to get you hurt in the league. You know, you got to start going off of two and pulling up, you know what I mean, uh, to be able to brace yourself. But he, he, he tries to do the spectacular too much. You know, okay. it's a time to do that when you got open space. But you know, when you come flying in there, back in our day, he, he definitely would be in the hospital. Because yeah. those yeah. guys would, yeah. no, nah, whole mace. Nah, you, you may do it once, but next time you come down yeah. and you try that again, you're going to be on your back. There's That's no cool. question about it. But, you know, the kid is talented, ultra talented. Uh, I think he's just dealing with some problems right now mental problems that he had to deal with or mm-hmm. it could be social problems. I'm not sure, but I think his father really have to, you know, mm-hmm. be a father. And, yeah. You know what I mean? He yeah. really yeah. have to be a father to him and let him know that, that he got a lot to lose. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot to lose, you know yeah. what I mean? They, the league is not going to put up with the antics mm-hmm. and they will, will show you what the league is about, you know, if you keep it up, you know what I mean? But I think he got a, a chance to, you know, correct himself, but it's going to truly be up to him. And he got to get around the right people, you know, yeah. whoever's in a circle, you know what I mean? 
I, I tell all these young players when I get a chance to speak to them, I, and one thing I respect about LeBron is how he brought guys up to his level. That's you know what I mean? You, yeah. you at a different level in life, you know, and so you have to bring guys up to your level. You want mm-hmm. them to, you know, still be your boys and what have you. That's cool. But they have to come up to your level because you have a lot to lose. They don't have a lot to lose. You know <laughs> what I mean? At the end of the day, you know, you get kicked out this league and all of a sudden you back in the neighborhood. They're going like, man, I tried to tell them. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? <laughs> no, nah, yeah. you ain't trying to yeah. tell them. You trying to go and live yeah. his life. You know what I mean? But Yeah. I had a I, I coach yeah. early that told me, you know, it's very few eagles. You see them soaring real high, right? Yeah. Thing, but there's a lot of chickens down there. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. So he ha- he have to he have to understand that. I mm-hmm. think LeBron got a uh, a movie out about his life. You know what I mean? And, and I think he need to sit down there and watch that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because LeBron show you if you want to keep your friends around you and what have you, this is what you have to do. You know okay. what I mean? And he put them all in in school and got mm-hmm. them educated. And mm-hmm. uh, look at him. Look at Rich Paul. Look yeah. what he's doing. You know exactly. what I mean? So that's, yeah. that's just a prime example of what you have to do in order to, you know, bring these, you know, your boys up to your level. Let them, you know, yeah. stay down there. If that's what you want to do, okay. I see yeah. you when I see you. But uh, I can't be out there doing what I'm doing because I got people I have to take care of and and 200 some million dollars off the table. I just don't get it. Two hundred million dollars on the table, man. You you can lose that just like that. Well, we we were talking about friends. I, 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 one of our mutual friends, Mike Gardner, uh, who has Ten Energies, you know, sponsors our show. But you and he are close. Golf mm-hmm. tournaments. We just got to talk a little bit about your your relationship with Mike and mine as well. This energy drink is actually on point every time. Yeah, I it is. Hey, it's a uh, you know hydration, but it's also I love beverage with benefits. Tell me uh, a little. About your relationship with the Thin Energy Hydration folks and Mike and 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 how that what that has done for you and and how how you feel about it? No, it's been great. You know, I met Mike up here in uh, Connecticut at at a boat show in Bridgeport, and uh, he came up to me and told me he got a bone to pick with me <laughs> and, and what have you. You know how Mike is. You know, he, yeah, he's not know. shy. He's no. not shy. At all. And uh, he was telling me about this drink and. Uh, he gave it to me, and and I drunk it. I like, man, this is mm-hmm. good. And I called him about a week later. You know what I mean? And say, yeah, I want to get involved in this, man. Um, you know, plant based too. That's right up my alley. Yeah. And you know, and it does do all what it said do. You know what I mean? It gives you energy. Uh, I tell them all the time. It's like I could drink that in the morning. I don't have to eat until twelve, one o'clock. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it, it helps. It almost forces you into, uh, what is it, the, the new phase, uh, intermittent fasting. Because yeah. if I'm in the morning, I'm not eating, man, until noon. I got to yeah. make my eat. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, and so it, it's, we're doing some great things. You know, obviously we're in Publix and we get ready to open up uh, some stores up here where I'm at in uh, the New York area and uh, price choppers. So we're excited about that. So the growth has been steady and fast. Uh, we had to kind of watch ourselves because we're growing too fast. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that's always a good good thing to have, you know what I mean? So uh, I'm excited about where where this company is going and, and Mike and what he does and the leadership that he brings to this company is just amazing. So uh, I'm, all bo- I'm all on board. As well as we have, obviously, we have Derek Brooks, uh, yeah, former yeah, uh, Tampa was, Bay Hall of Famer. Dominique Dawes. Involved. Dominique Dawes, yeah, involved. And so it, it's, it's been great, man. You know, more and more we get it out there. It's flying off the shelves. Wherever we put it at, people are, like, just loving it. So uh, I'm excited about where we're headed. Well, well, we'll have to come to one of the events and, and, and a golf tournament, definitely, yeah. and spend some time with you, man, because that'll be good. I, I have a we'll, – we'll close you out with a two-minute drill. We uh, – <laughs> Like you know football, your brother plays. So yeah, you know. You know I'm going, a big Steeler fan. I'm a big Steeler oh, fan. Steeler okay. nation. Steeler nation. <laughs> I, got you. I got you. Well, what what what's the music in, in your in your Spotify or Apple Music? What what do you, mm-hmm. what do you? 
Well, I, I go all kinds of genre. Uh, I uh, listen to rap when I want to be upbeat. When I want to be mellow, I listen to jazz. Okay. When I just want to be soulful. I'm R and B. So I'm I'm old I'm old school rap though. So I got not new yeah, rap, yeah. but old school. We're in the rap. same we're in the same frame. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good, good. Well, you make it easy to move down the field. The next one, you said plant-based. Are you still eating meat at all or are you get, giving it up all I, the way? I, not all the way, but I probably once, maybe a week. You know okay. what I mean? I eat a lot of chicken, a lot of baked, okay. baked chicken, a lot so, of fish. You I know what I mean? What chicken, which one do you like or what's your, what's your go-to now? Um, my wife, she cooks this nice little glazed chicken that she cooks. And I just like, man, I can't get enough of that. Sometimes I have to stop her from cooking, you know, every week. Well, it over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I just love just trying to eat healthy and, yeah. and making sure that I watch my weight. I, it's funny because I was just talking to Larry, Larry Johnson, and I was mm-hmm. telling guys like ourselves who's six feet and up, you know, you really have to watch your weight as you get older. You have to drop weight. You know, yeah. you look at look at all these these tall guys, you know, then you see them like guys like Kareem, like Robert Parrish, uh, even my boy uh, Herb Williams. You know, they all drop weight, you know what I mm. mean? Because it's hard for your heart to pump, you yeah. know what I mean? As you get bad older, on your heart, you got your joints bad on your heart. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I try to tell all my guys, you know, it's important that you drop weight. So uh, I'm like pushing like, 215 right now. I want to get down to about 205. But I dropped that during the summer because I play so much golf. So All right. just that, that winter weight, you know how that winter weight get on you up here. Yeah, it stays with you. Well, and, I'm, and so, I'm mine too, so when I see you, hopefully. Yeah, I'm, there you go. <laughs> I'll, I'll play. You know, yeah, last yeah. for me, so because you're getting it down the field nice and easy here. I, I, I you're on your boat, so I was gonna ask you mountains or water, but I'm I know that's water. <laughs> definitely, definitely. What's the one story? Me, what's the one story that's never been told about John Starks? Never. I mean, people don't know about John. Ooh, man. Uh oh, it's probably when I was uh, a roofer. <laughs> You yeah, I worked as yeah, I was a roofer coming out of college. Uh, I was in between, you know, getting ready to go to training camp for San Antonio Spurs, and so okay. I was just just leaving college, and you know, I had my my wife and my son, so okay. I needed a a job, you know, and I had to put food on the table, and so uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, get a job at Empire Roofing in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and mm. the first thing we had to do is go up and walk like six inch steel planks and myself and uh, a guy by the name of Richard Dumas. I don't know if you remember Richard Dumas. He played in the NBA. Yeah. And, I remember. Uh, yeah. He, we grew, well, he grew, grew up in Tulsa. He was a little okay. younger. Than okay. And uh, so we got a, we got a job and the first day on the job, uh, we had to walk these six inch, you know, steel <laughs> uh, beams. And he got up, you know, he's six, eight. So he's further up and he got up and took two steps, said, I can't do this. <laughs> so he ended up quitting. He's okay. like, I'm done. Yeah. He didn't even go across the beam. I said, I thought about it too. Cause we was up high. I yeah. Thought, Man, I got a wife and kids. I'm going to have to, <laughs> I'm going to walk this plank right here. So I walked across it and I said, okay. And I was just walking slow. You know what I mean? Then eventually as I continue to, get used to him it was just like it was you walking on the floor you know what i mean so i would just like scoot across some things like it wasn't nothing and i almost fell off i was putting on these tin roofs and it, got, it was raining and i slipped through the patty and i caught myself caught myself like that and i was hanging on and i put my other arm up there and pulled myself back up and wow. uh, and I, uh, my uh, my coworker said you need to get off the camp and get out of here. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Luckily, we only had like a couple more weeks before camp. And uh, right. yeah, I, if I would have fell through there, it was nothing but concrete. I was like 30 feet up. I would have probably broke my legs or broke my back or something. Yeah. But I, I was like, I think about that. And it's like how quickly that, that could have yeah. like ended my, ended my career. 
Man, that's awesome. Well, John, it's been great having you on Chopping It Up with Buck, man. We appreciate it. It's been too long. We'll do it again, especially since I know you love yes, it. Sir. We'll do it around then energy hydration the mic and mic. There'll be a lot of the trash talking because I know that's what <laughs> Yeah, he, he talks a lot. Let me just tell you. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Hey, All right, John. Appreciate you, bro. You.